Hey, 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 what's up, guys? This is Eric with programwitheric.com. Today, we are going to talk about technical recruiters. I'm going to give you six tips on how to deal with technical recruiters and what you should do um, and how to get a job by using them. Before we begin, I have a quick, um, quick thing first. Udemy is having a $10 sale. You can see right here. I have loaded, I put some links below with my favorite Udemy courses. I think it's actually a $12 sale. But it's only three days left. So you gotta go check it out. Um, some of my favorite courses are below. If you click on any of those, I get a few bucks if you end up buying in the course. So I just wanna put that out there right now. I'm also streaming, so if, um, if you have any questions, while I'm going through here, feel free to talk, uh, put a question out. And also, if you're watching the replay, leave a comment below with your questions on technical recruiters. How well has it worked for you? I am very interested. So without further ado, let me put this on here. Six tips when working with a technical recruiter. Okay. So. Here is six tips when working with a technical recruiter. And if you're joining, like I said, please leave a comment below if you have any questions. So when you're dealing with a recruiter, first thing you have to know is that you should probably find a recruiter before you need it. Um, this kind of sounds counterintuitive, but you don't want to be in a squeeze. You don't want to be in a situation where you just got fired or you just got laid off and then you need to find a job. So you start talking to some recruiters because I mean, they can help you, but it's also a problem where you'll come um, you'll come off to them a little bit more desperate. You might end up taking a job you don't want. Um, they may be more incentivized to kind of get you off their back instead of finding it the right placement for you. Um, some recruiters may not um, put you high on their priority list. So really, don't wait to find a recruiter uh, when you're looking for a job or you or you definitely just need a job because you got laid off. Look for a recruiter a little bit later, a um, little bit before that happens. So, one thing you can do is, you know, start talking to recruiters, get to know the recruiters first. And, and when I talk about recruiters, I'm talking about like IT. So we're talking about developers, programmers, recruiters that kind of specialize in those areas. Although this could apply to other areas too. Um, and really, when you talk to recruiters, you want to find someone that is right for your talent. So obviously if you're a developer, you're a web developer doing web development, you don't wanna to talk to someone that's looking for Java developers. Um, so you wanna make it clear that you're looking and when you talk to develop, when you talk to recruiters that they're in the right, you're in, you and them are in the right place together. So you guys both have the right looking, they're looking for a talent that you have and that you have the talent that they're looking for. And really, it's a bad idea if you are if you don't have a job, or like let's say you're a teacher and you're looking to to move over to do web development. It is kind of a bad idea. Let me fix my screen here. It is kind of a bad idea to like change jobs. So if you're if you don't have any kind of if you if you've never been a web uh, developer before and you're kind of switching jobs. Going, going, being a recruiter, going with a recruiter doesn't always work. I know some people, um, like uh, Dylan from Coding Tutorials 360, has had some luck. Um, he was he, but he's worked his way up doing different jobs that are related to web development, and then he was able to use a recruiter to help him get a web development job. But typically, there aren't the, they aren't quite the right people to talk to if you're switching careers. You really want to be established first before you still before you talk to your recruiter because they will most employers are looking for those type of people and um, you want to work with someone that that uh, is looking for a talent that you have hey what's up solid snake so LinkedIn well first this is goes goes without saying you probably should create a LinkedIn profile I think everybody should especially if you're in the if you're looking to be a developer or anything in the IT world. And I don't think it's a bad idea to accept connection requests from all recruiters that contact you. It kind of, uh, accept it. You don't necessarily need to 
respond back to their messages. But it's a good idea to like accept it. Some recruiters won't send you anything unless you accept their messages. They will never contact you again. And like I said, you could always, uh, if they keep on connecting or keep on sending you job offers or messages and you're getting annoyed by them, you can always uh, disconnect from them or unfriend them in LinkedIn. Not, it, basically the same thing you would do on Facebook or something. But uh, so if they know you, you don't have to deal with them. And I think there's this stigma in our industry that recruiters are annoying and that they are they're not useful. I think they are a lot more useful than people um, put them out to be. So another tip is to be polite, courteous, and confident. So, you know, it's easy to kind of get this entitled attitude that since a recruiter is coming to you, that you need, um, that you kind of have, have the upper hand and that you can just demand a bunch of things from them. But in reality, they're usually working with a company or two. They're looking for a specific candidate that has a specific set of skills. Sometimes some recruiters aren't as good as others. They may, you may be a Java developer and they kind of contact you for a web development job or something. But in, for the most part, they're looking for a specific set of skills and a salary range. And it's really, when you first meet someone, you don't, um, you don't want to come off as being entitled or an ass to them because you will quickly find out they'll ignore you and maybe it was a really good job job opportunity but since you kind of had that attitude they won't continue on with it and of course it goes without saying you don't want to lie to a recruiter that that uh, contacts you you want to be upfront with your salary requirements but you've got to be careful there are some there are some recruiters that will be not good fits they will bully you. They won't. Um, you'll give them a salary requirement, and they won't listen to you. And um, they'll maybe pepper with you with a lot of questions about how much you make currently. And you don't ever have to answer those questions. Now, some employers might ask you how much you're making currently, but I don't like that. Um, you can refuse to answer that. It just depends on it. So. You need to be courteous and polite to them. They should be courteous and polite to you too, though. So keep that in mind. When you first talk to a recruiter, you want to interview them um, just as much as they're probably getting to know you too. So you need to ask some really simple questions like, what is their assignment? So what are they looking for? What company are they recruiting for? What's the position? What talents? What what requirements do they need? Um, what are the salary requirements? What are the salary ranges? So you really want to talk about the specifics of the position, but you also kind of want to get to know the recruiter too. Like, have they been? How long have they been doing this? Have they been able to place other candidates before? I mean, usually when you talk to someone for the first five minutes, you can kind of get an idea of like how this person is are you going to get along with this person are they gonna i mean it's hard to tell for some people but you like are they gonna be on your side or the other employer side so realize it is a there is two parties in here you and the actually three parties you the recruiter and the company that they're recruiting for and the recruiter does get paid if they place you on that job usually sometimes the first six months sometimes the first year part of your salary is going to go to the recruiter sometimes they get paid if they fill the position or not. So it just depends on what the recruiter is. So if you are looking for a job that's over $100,000 a year, they usually, it's a lot of times those recruiters work, there's special recruitment like Google and Amazon have companies, well, basically in, inside Amazon, they have recruiters that are gonna talk to candidates and they're going to, they usually get paid if they fill the positions or not. So you kind of need to understand where they're coming from and what their incentives are. So that way you know everything is aligned. But it, that begs the question, I mean, if you go through a recruiter and they're taking like 15% off the top, could you have gotten more money if you went to the company directly? And uh, sometimes that's the case you might have been able to, sometimes it's not. But you may not even ever known about it unless you would have talked to a recruiter. So they do have their place in the ecosystem up Justin so another tip is it's okay to work with more than one recruiter usually they aren't your personal job finder so 
it's really easy. Um, I think I've had this happen before and other people have had this happen where you talk to a recruiter, they connect you with you on LinkedIn, you have a one-on-one -on -one conversation, your salary requirements are met, you kind of get a good feeling for this person, they get you in contact with the company, you apply, you get flown out somewhere or maybe they do a phone interview, but something, some, some for some reason, maybe not even your fault, you don't get the job. Now, you might think that at that point you need to go back to the recruiter and talk to them and they need to be like your personal job finder and they need to get with another company and they should, and they may even say to you, hey, we'll keep your resume on file. But really at that point, you, you should be done with that recruiter because the recruiter usually, um, and there's some exceptions, but they only work usually with a couple of handful of companies. And when candidates get rejected, they're usually not looking to take that candidate and find another job for them. That's not really their job. Um, they are Their job is to fill the position with the company that they're working for or working with or a couple of companies they're working with. Their job is not to take your resume and, and send it to 30 different places and find what it is. Now, that has happened before. There are some recruiters that will do that, but in general, they're not. And usually you got to be careful. If you do find a recruiter who's just going to send your resume off to hundreds of companies, you may be a little bit wary with that because they're probably not going to specialize or, or take a lot of time to find out what you want and what companies want and and put you in the right place. Um, so there are places that you can pay. There are some recruiters that you can kind of pay them some kind of fee and they will personally go out and try to find a job for you. And that's a different type of relationship than the ones that usually if you just get a message on LinkedIn from some recruiter looking to fill some job in New York or San Francisco. Uh, so still, and this is my last tip, that personal connections are still the best way of finding a job. So if you're looking, just realize that if, if you are looking for a job, knowing people is a really good way of, of getting a job. So if you can, if you know somebody that works at the company you want to apply for, getting your resume to them, having them personally recommend you to their boss or to the hiring manager or to HR will definitely get you one step up above the other candidates. Um, so having a, a personal network of people that are in the industry that you know is a really good idea. And then you don't have to worry about recruiters at all. So you can just go directly to these companies and the people and the relationships you you already have to get the job that you want. So keep in mind, uh, always work with your personal network first. Hopefully you have a personal network that you've been keeping track of some of the people that you've worked with in the past or at least kept up with them on LinkedIn. You some, I mean, it's okay even if it's someone you haven't talked to in a few years to if you lose your job or you're looking to change jobs, I don't have any problem hitting those people up and say, hey, Joe, I haven't talked to you in a while, but I'm looking for a job. If you know anything or if you can recommend a place, you know, help me out. I, I, I think that's that's fine. I mean, some people would say that's a little sleazy, like you're just using these other people that you don't really know very well. But that's that's a you got to kind of get over that, especially when you're looking for a job. You know, don't don't hesitate and not ask somebody because you haven't talked to them in a while or you don't know them that well. I mean, that's all about networking and trying to get your foot in the door. We're not all best friends with all these people and all these different companies. So those are just a, a few quick tips on how to deal with recruiters. Um, we could definitely go into a lot more. I have a lot of information about LinkedIn but and how to set your profile up in LinkedIn. If you have any questions, you can leave a comment below. Um, I had one question. I'm in the early stages of learning programming prep courses for the firehouse project, but this is very interesting. Never hurts to plan ahead. Yeah, definitely. And like I said, if you're learning to program, uh, it's going to be harder to deal with recruiters. If you haven't ever had a job in development or programming, it's a lot. Like I said, usually when you're changing careers or you don't have much experience, recruiters are not going to be always your best friend. Um, usually you might have to rely on just putting your resume out there and trying to get anybody and anybody to look at it and to try to get those interviews yourself. And I did a video before of how to stand out. So you may want to look at that. Uh, thanks, Sergio. It's a nice video. So that is all I have today. 
Uh, we've kind of talked about this for a while. If you guys, actually, I do have one more thing, two things actually. I I did a video last week where I said uh, if you had joined my mailing list, I was going to give you a free copy of my Vue.js in action book, which uh, there's links below. It's a book on Vue.js, which is I'm writing about it. So if Vue.js is a JavaScript framework. It's really hot right now. A lot of people are learning it. It's really cool, especially for those who aren't. React and Angular is great, but if you want to try something a little different, I think you're going to be really liking Vue.js. So I'm going to give a book away for people that signed up for my mailing list from last time. So I have I have it in another window because I don't want you to see everybody's email addresses, but I picked one. His name is Robert McGuire. Robert McGuire, so thank you for signing up for my mailing list. You will be receiving a free copy of my book. Vue.js in action. And for, you know what? I will give one more book away for one live viewer. So if you're in the live chat, just hit one on the keyboard, let me know. And I'll just pick randomly one live person watching. And you'll have to email me. Uh, you'll have to email me at my email at the on my GitHub. So if you search GitHub for Eric Hanchett, you will find my email address. You can email me at that address and uh, I will give one lucky person a free book. So, okay, I'm gonna give it to Sergio just cause I just picked randomly when he had it first and he's been talking. Okay, Sergio, if you're, thank you for, for watching, go ahead and email me at that email address on GitHub um, and let me know and I will send you a free copy. Uh, it's the ebook version, the, the hardback isn't out yet, by the way. So thank you guys, I appreciate it. If you like these videos, click that like button and then click that little subscribe button and the little bell button too. Cause I think I will. you'll be notified when I do my next live videos and I like to give away free stuff because I got lots of free stuff to give away, which is awesome. Um, if you didn't win, sorry, but maybe I, if you watch my next live one, I will give away another free book. So I appreciate it. And thanks guys. Take care.